Hi, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Garrett Richardson, and I'm a high performance coach. I work with middle school and high school athletes on how to train their mind as they do their body. Because Hall of Fame coach Nolan Richardson and I do take this pandemic very seriously, we will be sitting six feet apart as well as wearing a mask. With no further ado, let's begin. Welcome to episode one with Conversation with Grandpa. So today, we're going to talk about one thing, and that is where did Coach Richardson start his coaching career? So Coach, where did you start? You won't believe this, Garrett, but uh, I started as a, a guy that was too old, they said, was, and too big in an area in which I lived with Hispanic kids and I was the only black kid in that neighborhood uh -huh. and so I was a big guy and the coach uh, instead of discouraging me saying I'm too old he made me the third base uh, coach that brought him in, told him to hit the dirt and all those to give the signals, they taught us signals and boy I, I enjoyed that so much that I could hardly look forward. I was <laughs> always looking forward for the game not to play anymore but to, to, to coach again. Right. And so I, I, that's where I got that. You know, when I was growing up, I was nicknamed Sam, mm -hmm. you know, and, and pretty soon it got to the point where I became Sweet Sam. Uh -huh. you know, why is I, Sweet Sam? Be, the reason is that they, I thought when I was playing basketball as a little fellow that I, I was pretty sweet on the court, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I could do some things that they couldn't do. So, uh, so after a while, you know, we started as football came around, I was a quarterback. Right. And so I enjoyed drawing up plays. And I spend the whole evening and night sometime with my pencil and pad drawing up X's and O's on the football diagram. So wow. I, I'm 10 years old. All I, all I thought about was what's the next, next play we're going to run. Did you ever get to a point where you, did you enjoy coaching more than you liked playing or? Or was it different for sport? It was it was different in every sport. You know, okay. I thought I thought my game was baseball. You know, because that was the first organized sport that they let us play. In other words, from eight to eight to twelve, you could play in the little league. Uh -huh. And so that's when it started in the El Paso area. There I was at the time. I, I started when I was seven. And wow. then as time when, of course, my birthday's in December, so I would turn at the end of the year to eight. But I went on and played it as an eight-year-old at the age of seven. So as time went on, I kept growing and getting bigger. So now all of a sudden, I'm over age because, <laughs> because of my size. So uh, I guess coaching would become very second nature to me. That's, that's I guess, if, if I can't, if I couldn't do it myself, then I, I hope that I could help someone else do what I couldn't do. So coach, um, how was it? And let's, I know you said you did different sports. So, what did the parents say with you on the field, not playing, but you're coaching their kid that you're younger than? How did that work out? Well, you know, the difference is today's kids and, and, and our kids, or your kids, or the kids before, there wasn't that many parents at the game. Okay. <laughs> you know, we had very few parents that followed their, 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 either their grandkid or their sons to the, to the game. Take, for example, my grandmother. She used to come to the games, and she'd been sit right behind the right behind the the, uh, the screen, and yell at me all the way time. Throw that ball! Throw that ball! Throw it high! I mean, she was coaching too, you know. <laughs> How old was old mama then? Uh, she was probably in her middle late sixties. Wow! You know, but she was at the games, and then one day I got so embarrassed. Because I could hit the ball pretty good. She says, you better hit that ball, Sam. You better hit that ball. I can hear it clear, 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 clear. I never took a swing. That's the only time I struck out that year. <laughs> three, I, three, three balls came straight across the plate. And I just looked at him, but I could hear my grandmother in the background. So when I got home, she said, why you strike out? <laughs> I said, because you, you're yelling at me. That's why. <laughs> That's she says, well, I won't go to the games anymore. And I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was, it was hilarious. <laughs> wow. 
you know, for a lot of people, their first experience as a coach came either maybe as a team when they had little league and helping as a an assistant, if you will, or they get into college and it has a GA as a grad assistant, or even in the high school level or middle school, they're volunteering. For you, I feel like that's so extraordinary to, to know how your life is and how it went for you that your first opportunity as a coach started at such a young age. What did you, what was it that you felt you got out of that situation that carried with you throughout your life? You know, Garrett, some things we do and we don't know the results or how it's going to come out. You go in for one reason, not necessarily get what you go in it for. I don't think I went in to be a coach or given the opportunity to coach on the third baseline or run the quarterbacks or run a basketball. I, I you know, the just just being a part of that. And whatever happens after that happens. In other words, I didn't think that one day I would become a coach. But when you start to think about oh, my line and the way I grew up and what I did, it seemed like it was something that was natural for me to be, is to already know by the time, I, by the time I'm in high school, I knew that if I wasn't going to be able to play it, I wanted to be as close to this game as I could. The only closer is to coach it. Right. And so I, I guess I would say that that's why I'm always against kids picking out a sport, a sport. You know, Especially because at a young age. At right? a young age. Right. You never know where you're going and where you're going to head. If, if, you know, if, you, if your talent and a good man bless you with some of these extraordinary talents that they have for kids, not only today, yesteryear also. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't limit yourself. I, I didn't limit myself to say that I'm going to be a coach. If it happened, it would have happened. It's just that it seemed that it fell into, you know, it all, everything fell in the, in, the, in, the, in the pocket for me to become who I am, and, and that's what I did as coach. That's wonderful. That concludes episode one. And these conversations is things that I have been experiencing, not only just in his everyday life, I got that throughout my life, but as a coach, listening to him and picking his brain for the last 20 years, there's always nuggets that I was able to receive, and now you have the opportunity to do the same. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, leave us a comment. Basically, show us some love. And if you have a question for Coach Richardson or I, leave it in the comment box. You never know. It might be the question I ask in our next episode. Thank you again for tuning in, and we will see you the next go-around with Conversations with Grandpa.